Hello, this is going to be a, a short video on magnetism and uh, as you can see the side of the magnet is magnetic north and this side is magnetic south. And guess what happens if I put this, flip it over and put it in the middle, it sticks. And if I just nudge it to the side, it's gonna, yep, point to the other side, and back towards here. And that's pretty important because you think that magnet wants to stay in the middle, but it doesn't want to be in the middle. It wants to go at the edge, well, at least for a flat magnet or close to flat because this behavior doesn't work on strong magnets at a certain distance from the center since yeah it, it will stay in the middle but when you nudge it it goes to the side, but if you try to flip it over, this will not want to stay there. So it just flips back over on itself. And, um, yeah. Put that there. And drive this magnet right here. I just want to show you this. Yeah, nothing special. This is a magnetic viewing film. And um, that's how you make a squiggly line with magnets. Imagine doing this, but with wires. It shouldn't be that hard, is it? Let's play with this. Anywho, let's get back to this one. See, it stays over here, right? It doesn't want to stay there, but it can stay there because of the thickness but it's a weaker nudge it I mean it's a it takes more to get it to go out the edge but it does want to go at the edge and again try doing this well it doesn't want to do that so thickness matters here and strength between the magnets kind of matters too so as you can see it's in the general orientation that we're used to and I flip it over and it sticks and this is wider than this I mean taller and thicker so the strength of the magnet and the thickness of the magnet is in play here which is why you want to be able to tell this phenomenon happening in a circular sphere and it has to be as close to the as close to flat as possible but you could get this up to um, to get this working up to at least three magnets of this thickness and let's do this thing now I'm gonna move this magnet to the other side like that so that stay on the same surface I mean 
tangential to the center of the magnet. So I want it to be here. I'm just going to put it here. So it returns to there. But is this really magnetism? That's the question. For this, as you, as some of you, but not all of you, but as some of you might have, not, have seen, there's a guy called Ken Wheeler, and he placed a, a glass surface with ferro fluid on top of it, and he placed it slowly down on a, on a, his monster magnet, and all the ferro fluid went to the edge. So the magnetism is over there. While he also did a same exper a similar experiment, but with a, a, a bismuth ball that he casted, and he just placed it in the middle and just stayed in the middle, just like as you see in here. Just fling it off at a distance, but. This is what's what can I really model, or if it is modeled, it's not, or should I say, lots of people have improperly modeled magnetism. But I think Kane Wither pretty he gets it pretty well up to a point. Well. I think it's more like curved in a sense that at a bigger scale. Ooh, ouch. By by curved, I mean it goes curved outwards. I mean the same point. The the thicker it is, the more the more it it it, it seeks to um. It seeks to not let this stay in the middle, as you've seen in the other magnets. As seen here, this sticks in the middle. There. And one last thing to show you. This is what it looks like under the magnetic beam film. I'm just gonna flip it over like that. And you see that center point? It doesn't matter where I put it, you can still see it. This effect goes away the thicker the bigger magnet is. Now let's check. You don't see the center point as much. So yeah, you don't need a monster magnet to show the effects in what Ken Wheeler's uh, monster magnet videos has. You just need a, a proportionally flat to the thickness of a fairly strong magnet. This is a um, neodymium iron boron. It's white in the middle. I, I've seen it as I broke it. Oops. I almost broke this one too. This is actually cracked at certain points. I broke three of these. One broke up into three pieces, but I'm not going to show you. 
Um, they, they just share one field, of course, but see that crack there? Yeah, you see it. Ooh. Came together again. This is how it looks like. And let me get back to. Oops. Let me get back to these. Um, these are just. These are stickers that you put on the back of the. Magnets, but I just use them as spacers instead of the for for the sake of my illustration here. The actual spacer, the actual spacers, excuse me, that comes with the magnets are like rings, but they're not that useful for me. And again, I'm gonna show you this thing again. I find it fascinating, but nobody really talked about how to make something like this. But I get it. I know how to do it. But I could think why am I showing this is because let me just these out I guess use my fingers as spacers so you could see that and take that out and you see that two magnets right So if you want this part to torque, so to speak, you have to use wires, charge copper wires to have that squiggly line happen at the center in between these. So some kind of toroidal um, 45 degrees at a wrapped at a 45 degree angle or something in relation to the to two magnets and yeah just putting this together again and show you this gonna show you with this I made a pole finder to show that you really can put unlike poles together it gets not but with this just one of them I can so it wants to be an edge but I'll force that magnetic south to touch the magnetic north. Oops. It sometimes works. It's gotta be really, really, really. Okay, it doesn't work. Some, I think it's because it's too long, but you know, you get the drift, right? Alright. So, this is this. Alright. Wow. This is Let's see. Well, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.